snap at people sometimes. Mm -hmm. I would be snarky when I could have given them a nicer answer. Um, I would not give people the time that they needed. I would be in too big a hurry to get on to the next thing I had to do. And we get... Had a spoon. A had a spoon. <laughs> this is why I'm in Hollywood. Yeah. Eat your cereal, kids. <laughs> The full length of the new Nickelodeon documentary series, Quiet on Set, has now premiered, and a lot of it airs many unclean laundry about a single individual, Dan Schneider. When most people think of Dan Schneider, they immediately think of one particular show, iCarly, which changed the course of entire generations' childhoods. Although what has been made is how disturbing the man is and many others that worked on Nickelodeon at that time frame. Recently, we've seen the likes of Drake Bell come out and tell his story, which is extremely sad what he went through. And it appears it's now Dan Schneider's freedom may be up. So be sure to stick around till the end for the full details. The guy behind it all, Dan Schneider, the creator of popular shows like iCarly, Drake and Josh, Zoe 101, and Victorious, was previously praised and dubbed the Norman Lear of children television. However, in 2018, Schneider fell from grace as the first charges began to surface. Following the release of the docuseries, Schneider apologized profusely on YouTube on Tuesday, six years after he was dismissed. He expressed regret to everyone he had hurt throughout his 25 years as Nickelodeon's unchallenged, untouchable head of children's programming. He pledged to improve moving forward. Watching over the past two nights was very difficult, me facing my past behaviors, um, some of which are embarrassing and that I regret, and I definitely owe some people a pretty strong apology. Let's talk about the massages. Okay. Watching the content yesterday, it was disturbing. It was wrong. It was wrong that I ever put anybody in that position. It was the wrong thing to do. I'd never do it today. I'm embarrassed that I did it then. I apologize to anybody that I ever put in that situation. And even additionally, I apologize to the people who were walking around Video Village or wherever they happened because there were lots of people there who witnessed it who also may have felt uncomfortable. Conveniently, Dan Schneider was getting cooked so bad in his comment section, he ended up disabling them. Which speaks volumes, really, but this didn't stop people from expressing their opinions on the matter with numerous posts like, I never realized how common it was for heavyweights in the industry to write these character letters for friends or colleagues convicted of heinous crimes until the Danny Masterson trial last year, where he was convicted of f***ing two women. It took 20 years for them to see any shred of justice, and he had Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis, among others, vouching for him. This world is so grim, man. This actually makes a lot of post-Nickelodeon Drake Bell make a lot more sense. The almost complete unraveling of him as a person always struck me as kinda abrupt and sudden. Hearing that he was a while working for Nick and likely spent years going without proper support really shows how he went from point A to felony convictions. The way Dan talks about it is like how someone talks about a problematic tweet from 10 years ago. You're not being called out because some scenes in the show didn't age well, Dan. You're being called out for being a malicious predator. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the post notification bell. This way you'll never miss out on any future celebrity videos similar to these. Sachi Cool, a popular culture journalist and consultant for the Quiet On Set documentary, expressed her issues still with networks like Nickelodeon. A lot of people that are talked about in the documentary and the networks we're talking about are still in existence. They're still engaged in the same programming, so I would hope things will change, that it will overhaul how Nickelodeon works. Fundamentally, I would hope it makes them fully reinvestigate how they employ these kids. I'm realistic, they're not going to say we're gonna kill this programming, but I hope it will force them to reorganize how they do it. There are a lot of people involved in the story who should have a conversation with themselves about what they could have done what they failed to do. When it comes to children, you should be able to ask for accountability forever until you get it. And she's entirely correct. The fact they got away with this on the show for decades is disgusting as they literally ruined a number of child actors' lives from the show. For those of you that haven't seen Drake Bell's expose, here's a short clip. You know, that I, I don't know what got into me and, and, and I, I crossed the line and, I, and this will never happen again. Um... And, well, he figured out how to uh, convince my mom and everyone around to have me, you know, anytime I would have an audition or anytime I needed to work on dialogue or anything, I somehow ended up back at Brian's house. And it just got worse and worse 
and worse. And for those of you that might be unaware of who Brian Peck is and what he got charged for, he was charged with 11 counts against the child actor in 2003, those of which included a lewd act upon a child, sodomy of a person under 16, and fans of Drake Bell around the world have been in full support since he spoke out with numerous posts like, I used to not understand why Drake and Josh had beef offset. After hearing Josh discredit everything Drake went through, I get it. Sad that Drake who gave so much joy to children had to suffer so much. Dan Schneider 100% knew about Brian Peck. His dad knew and told Drake's mom, but she didn't listen. Shame. Before we go any further into the video, what are your guys' honest thoughts on this entire situation? Is it looking likely Dan Schneider will face some serious jail time due to his past actions, or will he continue to get away with it? Comment down below. In regards to that previous comment about Josh Peck not defending Drake, which seems to now be true as a few days ago, he posted this very strange TikTok which got people talking. I haven't talked to you since 2023? Take that as a fucking sign that you don't exist to me anymore. Damn, you fucking bug. You got sprayed with the raid. <laughs> Bye. See you never. bar. Although because of all the backlash he was receiving, he now deleted it and posted to his Instagram. I finished the Quite On Set documentary and took a few days to process it. I, I reached out to Drake privately, but want to give my support for the survivors who were brave enough to share their stories of emotional and physical abuse on the Nickelodeon sets with the world. Children should be protected. Reliving this publicly is incredibly difficult, but I hope it could bring healing for the victims and their families, as well as necessary change to our industry. Which which is pretty convenient to now come out in full support. When everyone is slating you online, this should have been your initial reaction. Dan Schneider also spoke about how in the writer's room, inappropriate jokes would always be made, but he thought nothing of it at the time. Dan, talk to me about the writer's room. From what I saw, not cool. No, no, and I, I don't mean to cut you off, but if I can cut right to the chase, let me just say, no writer should ever feel uncomfortable in any writer's room, ever period, the end, no excuses. Um, most TV writers, comedy writers have been in writer's rooms and they are aware that a lot of times there are inappropriate jokes made and inappropriate topics come up. Uh, but the fact that I participated in that, especially when I was leading the room, um, it embarrasses me. I shouldn't have done it. Anyway, this concludes today's video. Be sure to subscribe to Loaf Dude for future celebrity videos and turn on that post notification bell so you don't miss out on any future uploads. Until then, see you in the next one.